Welcome back, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be playing our mid-budget black-white aristocrats build. So if you haven't seen it already, we put together a ultra-budget version. Uh, basically the entirety of the deck was commons and uncommons in the theme of black-white aristocrats, minus the lands, godless shrine, and isolated chapel. Um, so the, the theme around aristocrats, if you're new to it, is self-sacrificing your creatures for value. Um, so this can either be trading off, having them die, or uh, sacrifice effects like Plague Crafter or the such. Um, so with this mid-tier budget, um, we're going to be adding, I think it was in total, is nine rares to the main board and sideboard combined, and two mythics. Um, so it's not a huge upgrade, um, like the non-budget version tends to have a few more rares. Um, so the, I'll kind of highlight what we've changed in the deck. Um, but for those of you who are just watching this video, the, the key card we're building around this Cruel Celebrant. Whenever a uh, Cruel Celebrant or another creature Planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses a life and we gain a life. So this is kind of like a Blood Artist effect, which is the original card of this archetype. Um, so we basically get rewarded for our creatures dying. Um, the rest of the deck's got a lot of afterlife threats or uh, cards that just leave tokens behind. Hunted Witness, Orzhov Enforcer, uh, Ministering of Obligation, Imperious Oligarch, and then we're adding in Seraph of the Scales as our mythic. So it's a very good beater that leaves two bodies behind as well. Uh, I can attack with Vigilance and then trade up with the Death Touch. Um, the rest of the deck for the two drop slot is pretty much the same. You have Dusk Legion as card draw and some cast downs. Uh, within the three drop slot, we're adding some Midnight Reapers. Uh, so this is another way for us to draw cards as our creatures die. Um, so this is, we got rid of the, the zombie that could bring creatures back. This is another way to get card draw with our creatures dying. Um, and then in the rares, we're adding two Vraska's Contempt, uh, really good catch-all. So this is getting rid of the Conclave Tribunals uh, for Planeswalkers and Creatures. And then uh, three Sorens. So Soren is the best card in the archetype, hands down, and one of the strongest Planeswalkers from this new set, in my opinion, if you're playing Creatures. So first off, it's Static Ability. It gives all our creatures lifelink, which is huge for us to swing the battle, uh, kind of drain them out a long game, and then... Play Cruel Celebrants. Its plus can deal damage to Planeswalkers or opponents and gain us some more life. Or actually, sorry, this one only does damage. And its minus can bring back basically any creature in our deck. Um, so it'll, if we really need to in a pinch, it'll, we can sacrifice it to bring back a Seraph. But really, we can bring back any of these creatures and get more value that way. I've been really, really pleased with Soren um, in all my builds. I uh, originally started off with one and slowly been increasing up to three. Um, finally, uh, the sideboard, we added a Vraska's Contempt and we added in a Kaya's Wrath. So we got rid of the Adanto Vanguards. Um, the matchups didn't seem that reason. Like, against Control, they're going to bring in Cryo Carnarium versus. We saw that in the other match and pretty much everything in our deck gets swept up by it. So the benefit of having a Danto Vanguard is not really there. We're also weak to Chain Whirler in the deck, so having Vanguard again is not really shoring up those matchups. So another Contempt is good here, um, just more catch-all removal, and then we have Kai's Wrath as well. Um, so Kai's Wrath seem, might seem odd in a creature's deck, um, but it's a, if we fall behind, it's a way to catch up against like the big creatures, like the Explorer Package and stuff like that if need be. So we'll run it through some games. Gonna take the dog out really quick and we'll go from there. Sorry about the dog. Alright, so while this runs, let me get the dog. Sorry about that. Puppers wants all the attention. All right, so we'll get started. Um, so after this one, we will upload the non-budget version as well, and then I'll do the write-up on the Arena subreddit. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can drop comments here or in the subreddit, and we'll go from there. So we'll play first. Uh, so this hand, it's a little slow, but we'll try it out. Uh, we do need to hit another land of note. I generally don't like leading on Celebrants. Um, I'd rather them blow their removal on other stuff first. But uh, this is the way we kind of learn. OK. 
Okay, so this can be Sultai, could be a couple things. So here, we'll just lead off a Cruel Celebrant. We'll play out the Ministrant next turn. Okay, so they're not short on line drops. No attacks here. The fact that this makes two flyers as well is really good. And the fact that they've not been able to put counters on this is also really good for us. Uh, so here, I'm going to offer them the trade. They're likely to not take it. And then we'll just drop another Ministrant down. I just want to get in some chip damage. Saltai doesn't really have a way to gain life in the main board, so it's a good way for us to... If we can get them low enough when they attack in, we just trade off our creatures. Because right now we have... 2 damage. Oh, okay, so they have the Contempt. It's unfortunate. Uh, here... Here I'm okay trading off. Uh, I'm gonna do the Branch Walker in case they have a find. I don't want them to get a double explore. Um, so here... I'm actually okay attacking in with everything and dropping another Ministrant. So the triple Ministrant draw has been pretty good for us, at least just throwing in bodies. Okay, so they have a Hostage Taker. It's fine, we'll just cast it down. Ah, so they had the other land, which is unfortunate. Uh, so here... Playcrafter doesn't do too much. Let's just attack for two in the air. Pass. And then pass the turn. We'll likely cast down the hostage taker. So I'm actually going to use Mortify here, just in case we draw lands, we can cast both Playcrafter and that. That's perfect. I'm going to hold the cast down too, just in case they have a Hostage Taker. Again, targeting the Cruel Celebrant. Um... Here, this is an interesting play. Yeah, I think we just let it resolve. We could cast down our thing. That effectively drains them one instead of them gaining two for the math. Now they have another crisis. See if they attack in. So we'll just keep chipping in. So here I'm going to sacrifice this to get more flyers. If they have a finality, then we're dead anyways, so can't really offer much there. Wild Growth Walker. Tamio's an interesting inclusion here. They get the Branch Walker. Yeah. 
Unless we get a sore in this turn, I think we're dead. So this is a game where I'd bring in like Kaya's Wrath. Because they get this board state that's not really advantageous to us. Uh, I'm just going to throw up a block here. We need to take down Tamio. Okay, so there's a chance. This study is over. Uh, with the plague crafter. Just get rid of Dusk Legion Zealot. does get them the option of the spirits. So on the attack back, that's 6, 8, 10. Okay. Three crisis is when we call it quits. So the fact they had Vraska's Contempt is a little hurt, painful there. Um, so in this matchup, the Wanderer does have targets. We'll go Kai's Wrath. The spark can get Vivian, it could get Tamio. I could get Hostage Taker. Playcrafter is not as good in this matchup. We want targeted removal. Moment of craving could be decent. Uh, another contempt. Two cards to cut. What's a liability for us? Probably the oligarchs don't do much for us. I think we try it like that. Saltai is probably tough. Like their creatures are just all bigger than us, and if they can get rid of uh, what's its name, the cruel celebrant. Uh, we need to mulligan this. Gonna keep this, but we want to try to find a better land. Ah, that's awkward. Awkward, awkward, awkward. So I'll probably Dusk Legion Zealot this turn. Mm. I'm gonna Minister in here. Just to be more mana efficient. If we draw land, we could potentially play out both. So they opt to keep the wild growth walker. So let's dig for a land here. No attacks. Okay, so probably got it. If we draw land, I think we have to Vraska's Contempt Wild Growth Walker. Which we don't. Okay. Play out the Midnight Reaper. We'll give some card draw. Off. And they have another Branch Walker. So mana's definitely hurt us this game. Uh, I'm gonna opt to no blocks here. Okay. So here. We can block six damage. Yeah. I think we double celebrant. And no attacks, so we'll block, block. I would like to ask about the new lunar in the moon. I know I noticed someone. I realize I said that Salt Eye doesn't have ways to draw cards. They do, or gain life. So block here, block here, that's 
8 damage. So we'll also just block there. Whole bunch of triggers on the stack. Um, so here, it does give us a nice buffer. So we can just get rid of, I think we just get rid of Tamiyo. I have become too involved with my work. No attacks here. So Vivian, I'll shoot down. Oh, they opted to not shoot down. Hydroid Crisis. So just try to keep our life as high as possible. Um, so here... Poke Vivian for one. Uh, I've seen squirrels hit harder. So I know shocking ourselves is a little dangerous, but so they can hydroid for you five right now. Nature. So they get a Lanwar elf. Crisis gets pretty big here. So we do need to block here, unfortunately. Okay, so Mortify is pretty good. So we can mortify this. Moment of craving this. Do we want to attack Vivian? So that takes us to 8 if they have an explore. So let's do this. No, I, I don't think we're winning this game by doing it as such. So we're doing this for the lifelink because Vivian could technically kill one of these. So we want to have a, at least one blocker back. The wilds are my shield. And then this gains us a life. Okay, so ravenous trooper covers. This game's over now. Uh, so no blocks. Okay, Vraska's Contempt is something. Not bad for a mouse. Uh, so we block, 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 take two, gain one. Opponent's giving us the GG, so either they have finality. Block, block, take four. Yeah, it's pretty much over. So you can get an idea of the deck. Uh, Sultai is one of the harder ones to play. Like, we technically could have blocked Goddess Kaya's Wrath, but we were pretty far behind at that one.
Salta usually beats up on the creature mirrors. Like every time we got him low, they just played Wild Growth Walker or something like that. His hands are awful. Let's try this out. Okay, so we got the land on top. We just want running lands, really. Enforcer into uh, Ministrant, into Ministrant, into Soren would be really good curve. So, Rakdos, Rakdos Steamkin. I'm just going to kill this now. You're not playing that card to not abuse it. It's not the worst draw, at least we can cast it. Uh, okay, so... I'm gonna uh, take action, decline, take action, red back glass. So since we've seen Dread Horde, we want to be aware of it and keep something back. Land next turn to be the best, Ministrant, Hunted Witness, and then curve it out with Soren, gain a bunch of life. And we're willing to take the damage there because we do gain quite a bit of life in this deck. So they ritualed here, but we still have three bodies. So they didn't do a world to us. Uh, here. Just get the most bodies possible. It's a weird deck. Ritual of Soot with Steamkin. Dread Horde Butcher and Chupacabra. And Glass of the Guild pack that you're playing a bunch of monocolored spells. And a hip. Alright, so whenever it deals damage, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, draw that many cards and add that much mana. So here we're just gonna play play this out and block. Really want to hit that land for Sorn. Soren buys back our enforcer or just pluses it and gets around damage. Let's see if they attack in here. So they'll let's just block like that. Cruel Celebrant would have been nice on this board. And here we had two creatures die, but we le get left with three. Ritual of Soot would be good for them. Glass of the Guild Pack makes no sense in this deck. Haunt of Hightower. Flying Lifelink. Whenever it attacks, defending player discards a card. Whenever a card is put into one, it's graveyard. Okay. So, no attacks. Just play out another Ministrant. This is a uh, brew. So we have enough blockers. Kind of falling behind here, so we do want to try to get Soren down. Finally. So Soren is probably gonna die. Embrace the bloodlust. 
but we want to play this out for the death touch. Okay, so opponent's not chess guy. Good that we use Soren for value there. So I'm just going to play out the cards from our hand. If we get a uh, combat or cruel celebrant, we'll play her out. You're just fuel for the fires of freedom. The only prize I desire. Your head. Okay. It's actually pretty good for us. Because now we can kill Angrath and attack into the opponent. My horns and hammer. Oh, did I miscalculate on Angrath? I did. That was a mistake. And now that they have Phoenix, it's a little awkward. Here I'm just going to run everything into the opponent. They'll kill one and then we'll just alpha strike next turn. This gets in five damage. Yeah, they're using a murder on a token. could see with like this board state if we had Soren out how much life we'd be gaining as well. Angrath doesn't really do much because we're not blocking anyways. Okay, cool. Cuckoo. So here... Let's get rid of the Phoenix. This gets rid of blockers in the sky. So that's four damage guaranteed. They could block three, but they take two more. And it's Xaxes. Cool. So we bet red black stuff. Alright, so Wander's good. The Spark's good, Vraska's Contempt's good. I think that's what we want. What's bad? Oligarp's really not doing much in this matchup. And Playcrafter. Do I maybe want Oligarp instead of Playcrafter? Because the god gets shuffled back, Phoenix just comes back, so we're losing value with it. There is a play for the Eldest Reborn. Kai's Wrath's also not that good, just based on what they play in their deck. Um, yeah, let's run it back like this. If we need to, we'll bring in Eldest Reborn. But they have like a lot of tokens and stuff. Like if we get a Haunt, we're in good place, but I think just between Vraska's Content Mortify, we're good there. 
That was all without Cruel Celebrant. Uh, fall again. So we need a black source here. The other hand, black source on two, and we're good. Black source. Hopefully, this deck doesn't play Chain Whirler. They might be playing like Rick's Mahdi Reveler. Ah. Punished. Such a weird deck. Uh, if we don't draw a line next turn, I'm just going to concede. We're too far behind. So, got rid of the... This doesn't deal with Judith. We're still too far off from that. Soren's a better 4-drop. Yeah. Poor man of that game. Eight, fourteen, seventeen, twenty-two. Seems reasonable. It's good to know they have Judith. They can start pinging our stuff. Oh, what's with these hands? All right. Well, Midnight Reaper replaces itself, Mortifies removal. Eh, yeah, we'll keep Ministrant. It's a good, it basically shows us three draws with Midnight Reaper. Okay, opponent missed. So getting Soren going will be good. I'm gonna go Midnight Reaper first and then play Soren. Eight that gives us five life as opposed to four. So feel for the opponent, we just lost last game because of it. And opponent concedes. So that's pretty much the list. Um, I'll upload this one and then work on the non-budget. If you want to take a look, this is what I'll be playing most likely. Um, so you got Tithe Takers, Dreadhorde Invasion, Spawn 2, Liliana, some Gideons. But I'll put up both lists and then do some more gameplays on this. Um, but that's pretty much the list. If you enjoy the content, please make sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching.